Mayor Pete Buttigieg has won the Iowa caucuses. According to the updated results that we now have available, he will walk away with 14 delegates while Bernie Sanders, the runner-up, will receive 12. And the only other candidate that has won any delegates is Elizabeth Warren. That leaves everyone else, including Joe Biden, without walking away without delegates from the Iowa caucuses. Because although the Democratic Party uses a proportional system, you do need to win over 15% of the vote to get to receive any delegates. So, because Mayor Pete, Bernie Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren did get over 15% of the vote, they walk away with delegates, whereas the others don't get anything. And, expected, and this will happen in every other contest, and New Hampshire is going to happen soon enough. So, the Iowa caucuses complete an utter shit show. And that's a reference to the Trump shit show that keep, people keep referencing. I think, like, looking at the Democratic Party right now, that they've looked at, at the last three years of Trump and all the scandals and all the discussions and the way that people have reacted to everything that Trump has done. It's like, it's the world. The world is ending. It's a clown show. It's a shit show. And they've been thinking, it's like, how can we do worse than what the Trump administration has been portrayed? Oh, yeah. Let's fuck up the Iowa caucuses, the first primary in the Democratic Party. Let's screw that up. The Republicans had the fairly, you know, fa fairly uh, organized caucus. Of course, Trump doesn't really have any challenge challenger, but I've seen some pretty messy elections. You know, I saw Iowa uh, in 2016, saw the results coming in. I saw Ted Cruz beat, uh, beat Trump. I saw Hillary beat Bernie. And it was a mess then. This is far, far worse. So there's an app. It, failed, the, getting the results was a complete and utter mess, and now that the results are in, people are challenging them, people are screaming, rigged election, rigged election. I don't know if it's rigged, I wouldn't pronounce myself on that, but all I can say is, it sure gives an impression for a lot of people, and, you know, compar compared to the mess that was 2016, uh, this is far worse, and it's going to create that impression for far more people. So that's going to create bigger problems for the Democrats going into the general election. Indeed, I made a video a while ago, some, you know, some a, a bit ago, talking about who I thought was going to be the Democratic nominee. My view was Joe Biden, based on his overall polling, the support he has from, you know, like Obama and other party figures. But I also said this: that the most likely outcome, as I view it, from the Democratic Party, given the way the polling is right now, is that it's likely going to be a contested convention. Now, that went against much of what people have said, because many people, if you ask them, many political analysts, many political experts, they would sit down and say, oh, someone's going to win. You know, by Super Tuesday, the Democratic Party is going to have a nominee. That's the thinking. But if anyone's paid attention to the polling, they wouldn't be so certain in proclaiming that, right? Uh, and so... When you're looking at polling and you see the and you see the end result of the Iowa caucuses, and then you see Pete Buttigieg rising in the polls after Iowa uh, could very well win New Hampshire, or, you know, be the runner-up in New Hampshire, then you start asking, well, what's going to happen then? Because Pete Buttigieg, yeah, he's going to win Iowa. He might do very well in New Hampshire, maybe even win New Hampshire. He's rising there. Uh, he does have a lot of support. I mean, he is a Christian white gay dude that that's basically what he is he is attractive to donors that's why he has so much money that's that's basically what his candidacy is all about beyond anything platform wise or who he is as a person you know he's a veteran etc he's a christian gay white dude who's also a military veteran who served in afghanistan he is very attractive to elites right that's what much of his candidacy is about but here's the problem for Pete Buttigieg yes he's doing he would do well in the midwest or any states that you know have a white majority uh, voting population in the democratic party but he's not going to do well with minorities in fact he's doing very poorly with minorities so what kind of situation is cre created then so you have this discrepancy between uh, him doing well in Iowa, him doing well in New Hampshire and other states, and then him doing poorly in many, many other states. So can Pete Buttigieg win the nomination? Maybe, possibly, but I don't think so. What I think is more likely is a contested uh, ele election, a contested convention, that's that's, uh, that's the thing. And that's a, this is also something from the Hill. 
Democrats see chances rising for a brokered convention. That's contested. The chance of a contested Democratic convention has increased after the muddle of the Iowa caucuses, raising anxieties ahead of Tuesday's New Hampshire primary. Iowa's delayed results left five top-tier candidates soldiering on, even as New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg blankets television airwaves with advertisements ahead of his contesting of delegates in March. That's Super Tuesday. This has all raised the likelihood of a longer primary fight where none of the candidates might win than 1,900 or close to 2,000 delegates needed to clinch the party's presidential nomination. It's possible, it's quite possible, uh, said Chris uh, Sparrow, the former New Hampshire Democratic Party chairman, veteran political operative in the state. I think Bloomberg entering into this thing provides a much greater possibility of a brokered convention. A brokered convention which would increase the power of the party officials known as superdelegates would be good news for Trump, since those who lose such contests might be even more angered over the process. It would be much better if we had the candidate win a sufficient number of delegates going into the convention, but I'm confident we'll have a candidate coming out of it who can defeat Trump. Well, I don't really know about whether or not they'll have a candidate coming out of it that can defeat Trump. There are issues within the Democratic Party. I mean, look at the candidates. You have Pete Buttigieg, who's right now rising. Um, you have Elizabeth Warren. You have Bernie Sanders. You have Joe Biden. And then you have Mike Bloomberg, right? Those are the candidates, the main candidates of the Democratic Party. So you have those four and Bloomberg. I don't know which you'd count as the fifth, but anyway, that that's that's beyond the point. So, um, so those are the candidates. Each of these candidates, each of these people, has a lot of money. Bloomberg is basically bankrolling the entire thing from his pocket and is spending hundreds of millions of dollars. And he's actually doing quite well in certain states. Like there was a Mississippi poll, he was like in double digits. Bloomberg can contest this. He can drag it until the end. But here's the thing: so can Warren, so can Sanders, so can Pete Buttigieg. So can Biden, though probably less so. Biden actually has some financial issues, but he does have the backing of Obama, and Obama would support them, right? And there's a belief that exists out there that if Biden ever got into serious trouble, Obama would come out to bail him out, would pour in the resources to help him, right? Because he likes him, he was his VP, so Obama would step in to help Biden. He hasn't done so because he's saving those resources for the general election. But then you get to the general election where my view was most likely an outcome I per perceived possible from that was um, Biden versus Trump. But here's the problem in the general election. Just if you ignore the messy primary altogether, the issue that comes out of that is Biden is someone well known for having financial issues and fundraising and all that. Trump right now is expected to raise close to $2 billion. And the guy running his campaign is Brad Parscale, the same guy who helped him win in 2016 on a digital front, Facebook, Twitter, all that. So you're going to go against, you're not, you're going to have the Biden campaign against Brad Parscale in 2020. That That's most likely one. And you're going to have, and the Democrats are going to have less funds. Like, just understand this, Hillary, for all the stuff that can be said, and much of it is true about her being a horrible candidate, she outspent Trump two to one. Now imagine Trump... Trump, the guy who, after everything he's endured, he's right now at, what, 45%, 43%, 45% on the average of the polling? Imagine Trump going into the general election, outspending the Democrat 2 to 1. Imagine that kind of context and accept it, because that's one of the very likely possibilities. So what's going to happen then is, is a big question. What happens after that then? Like, what, what, what happens with the Democrats? Well... They lose. Simple as that. Trump is that comp that capable of a candidate. And I, I think, like, now that you have people challenging him, now that you have someone on, you know, you'll have someone on the debate stage with him, you'll have someone people can, can compare to him, I think it's not quite surprising that his approval rating has risen slightly, especially, you know, a after everything that's going on. It's one thing to criticize a candidate in a vacuum, but when you have other candidates to compare him to, then things change. Now, mind you, I do wish to stress this out. I have nothing against Pete Buttigieg. Personally, I don't really care too much about him, really, either way. Not too fond of him, but then again, I'm not necessarily too fond of any Democrat uh, in the in this particular uh, 
primary. I, I think like th there's a reason why someone like Bloomberg is running because he looks at the fields and he says, I am not particularly impressed by this. Well, I think Bloomberg should have ran much, much longer ago if he wanted to actually win. Because right now he's just, you know, he, he he's portraying himself. He, he, he participated in a governor's meeting and he's portraying himself as like, if Biden goes down, I'm the fallback option, right? If he goes down, well, I think the fallback option is going to be Buttigieg. Now, of course, a lot of people are going to uh, say with Buttigieg, well, he's a gay man. People are not going to vote for a gay man. That's not going to happen. That's not the America we live in. No, maybe America would vote for a gay man. Or maybe the orange dude that's in the White House that won against all odds with virtually everyone against him will wipe the floor with anyone that stands in his way. But not because of any particular things with Buttigieg, it's because of Trump's strength rather than Buttigieg, uh, Buttigieg's uh, weakness, quote-unquote. And I, I use quotation marks because, you know, I don't... I don't think it's as big of a deal for a lot of people as some make it out to be. Yes, if evangelicals would never vote for someone like Buttigieg, absolutely true, but it's like they're never going to vote for a Democrat, and it's because of abortion. It's not because he's a gay man, it's because he support, he, he's in favor of abortion rights. That matters a heck of a lot more for those kind of voters. And also there's the discussion with the Supreme Court, there's Ruth Bader Ginsburg and all that, but things are not looking pretty for the Democratic Party right now. And if they continue having contests like the one that just occurred in Iowa, they're just asking to lose. I mean, I might as well say Trump has a 99% chance of winning if this is what's going to keep happening. Oh. And here's the thing. There's every chance that it could keep, keep happening to some extent. And if it's a brokered, contest, uh, brokered convention, if it's a contested convention, oh boy, do expect the worst, uh, do expect the biggest spectacle in recent American political history. Far bigger than anything Trump has produced to date. That's how bad the contested convention would be, especially when you look at the candidates right now. Costine here, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, uh, and like the video. Uh, thank you all for watching. And if you do like my content, do support me via PayPal, Patreon, YouTube channel membership, or YouTube premium, whatever you might prefer, so I can continue making these kind of videos.